சரி டேட்டா சென்டர் வென் வி டாக் அபவுட் டேட்டா சென்டர் எனி டேட்டா சென்டர் வெதர் இட் இஸ் சிஸ்கோ எக்யூப்மெண்ட் ஆர் நான் சிஸ்கோ யூ சி ஓன்லி த்ரீ மெயின் போர்ஷன் இன் த நெட்ஒர்க் டேட்டா சென்டர் நெட்ஒர்க் ஒன் வேர் யூ கீப் ஆல் த சர்வர்ஸ் ஒரு லாட் ஆஃப் சர்வர்ஸ் so those are computing device right servers are computing device so you got computing device uh, many many computing device as one out of data center secondly we will have storage where the servers will go and read data and write data so i would like to copy this let's put it in another corner and uh, and this is this is the storage and this is so server or computers you know the end device now in order to read operating system these computers need to interact with their gboard uh, in simple word i can say disk lan but these are all the words that we use to say storage storage hard disk j board means just a bunch of disk so we got uh, storage we got j board we got disk in the disk the location where the operating system is kept is identified using lan logical unit number logical unit number now if the server needs to go and read the operating system from a remote storage see it's a remote storage you do, you, you don't have a local hard disk here there is no local hard disk there is no local hard disk you have it in a remote so we need a network to connect between the server and the storage not only that if this server wants to interact with internet so you got internet here this is your isps connection coming to your office to data center from isp you are taking an internet connection now the servers may need to talk to the internet so servers are not only retrieving the operating system from the storage servers are not only putting some uh, data inside the hard disk and reading the data from the hard disk the server also needs 
internet to upgrade their operating system, download the driver, uh, or the user, the server may wants to check email. In between is the network. So the network, classically, we had a three-tier architecture, access, distribution, and code. Three-layer architecture. But there is a problem with this three-layer architecture. See, all the servers are connected, let's say, to the access layer. And the storage is also connected to the access layer. And this internet may be connected to the core here. Uh, from core, there is another edge shoot here. So the internet is connected here. So whenever the server wants to interact with the internet from the access layer, it goes to the distribution layer. And this is where the layer three happens, the routing happens, this is layer two. The packet is routed to the internet. You access the internet, Yahoo. When some when some server, let's say A wants to talk to K, they may be in different VLAN. So again, A is also connected to access layer, K is also connected to access layer. They go to the distribution layer, get routed because they are in different VLAN and they interact. A and K talks. So these are all routers and switches sitting in this layer. On top of this, we also have FC, fiber channel. So if servers needs to retrieve data from a disk, FC is a protocol that is used, not an ethernet, fiber channel. So in access layer and distribution layer and core layer, you're going to have fiber channel supporting switches like Nexus. Nexus, we have <clears throat> 5,000 series, 7,000 series, 9,000 series. These are all popular Nexus family. The Nexus switches are unified. The Nexus switches can can talk to both Ethernet as well as FC. Both. Yeah. So fiber channel is not Ethernet. They are different encapsulation type. You cannot use normal switches and routers to route the packet between the server and the storage. You need this FC supporting switches. That's the reason why the Nexus came into picture. Before Nexus, there was another switch called MDS. Even today we have MDS. We got both Nexus and MDS. Those MDS are fiber channel switches, SAN switches. And Nexus are also SAN as well as Ethernet, LAN. So in data center, if you see, you will see some catalyst switches, but 
you will also see some nexus switch or AMDS switches. But because you know we are going to focus on ACI, I am cut short, I'm making it to short. I cut short this uh, uh, explanation about a data center. What I want to say here with respect to ACI is we were we were dependent on the series, the model of the switch, and the the architecture is not a friendly, it is complicated. You have access layer, you have distribution layer, you have core layer. Whenever you are communicating between E and K, the packet goes from access layer to distribution layer and comes down. And whenever you are communicating from A to the internet, it goes to the access layer, distribution layer, core layer, and it goes to the internet and internet response back. The time taken is not the same. The time taken uh, to communicate between the members of different VLAN and the time taken to go to the internet is not the same. In short, what I want to say is the communication time taken is unpredictable. For some destinations, it comes very fast. The response comes very fast. For a few destinations, it takes really a long time. So, ACI solves a lot of problem. Okay, before that, I want to add something more to the uh, non-ACI data center. In non-ACI data center, we have Nexus 5000, which supports VPC, virtual port channel, um, which also supports fabric path. And we have... Mm, Nexus 7000, which supports both VPC and Fabric Path. Along with that, it also supports OTV, Overlay Transport Virtualization. Now, ACI supports all of this. That's one big advantage. ACI supports VPC that 5000 supports ACI support uh, in ACI you know need fabric path because ACI is much better than fabric path <coughs> in normal Nexus 7000 series and 5000 series they support VXLAN virtual extendable local area network VXLAN in ACI VXLAN is mandatory so if you take ACI, it is like a bundle of all features, which are which were supported in both 5000 and 7000. You have VPC support in ACI. So ACI is really an advantage. ACI comparatively, ACI is like a single solution for data center. See, for example, in non-ACI, if I want to have a feature called OTV, I, I need to buy 7,000 series Nexus. 5,000 don't support. So what I'm trying to say is, few device supports few future, but few other features are not supported. For that, you need to buy some other devices, which was, uh, not really good, but when you have ACI, you know, it has got everything what a data center needs in one, one box. It's just one solution for the entire data center requirement. So we remove this classical traditional approach of having core distribution and uh, access, we deploy ACI. Fine. How ACI 
solves the problem. Let's see. I'm sorry, I did not get your question. Can you repeat, please? Uh, what is compute? Okay. See, if you take uh, any end device which will use the data center storage, they're all called as computing device. See, every employee in an organization who sits inside the floor in different floor in different department, they all use a server or a computer to read data from a SAN, write data into the SAN. So those computers are what called as compute. So in the user which is gray in the mother device are the compute device. Other than application run night. And the application of which is the storage learn the data of a read pandranga or a storage learn the data of point to write pandranga operating system model condi lame on the storage learn the load of remote storage local hard disk of Chirka Matanga. In the company, it's a pretty company circuiting alone, enterprises circuiting alone. Or a data center will go. What for the data center? Everyone in the office when they log in, they log in through SAN. They 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 use the common storage, which is kept in the data center. So the the device that has got that application. To use this data center is a computer device. Example servers. Computers used by every employee. Now those computers, as soon as they come and turn on the thin client device, it goes and fetches the downloads the operating system very fast from storage. But storage and computer is not close. Storage is inside the data center room. You got a lot of storage device. What for the storage? Why do we need these TBs of data, hard disk? Why do we need this hard disk? In order to retrieve the users sitting on the computing side, they come here, they retrieve through the switch, you know, through these wires that the request from the from the user, the computing device, comes through the wire, go to this NetApps and the IBM and EMC square storage box, they retrieve the data. Reading and writing is through fiber channel, FC. Right? Three portions only in the data center. One is the computing device, the end device. The other one is the storage device. And then the other one is the network part. I showed you two things in my picture, which I was deploying in 2018 in Benin City, NPDC, Nigerian Petroleum Development Company. What you did not see there is computing. Computing will not be inside that freezing cold room. It won't be inside the data center. Computing people, they're all sitting outside in that first floor and second floor. Their computers are connected through the network to this big, big hard disks, j -boards. So, to reduce the complexity, Complexity like access layer, distribution layer, core layer. And to reduce the complexity like buying Nexus 7000 series if you want VDC, if you want OTV, 
because those two features are not supported in 5000. So we need to buy too many devices in data center uh, to have services. So why do all this confusing, complicated thing ACI was introduced? ACI has got all feature, all the necessary feature for a data center inbuilt. So of course ACI is a very costly solution, but it will be like at least uh, for next 10 years, uh, there won't be any more further uh, big expenditure if you deploy ACI. Um, because it is modular based, it is highly scalable, easy management. As a result, you know, ACI is more reliable because it is easy, scalable, device replacement, everything is very easy, less time taken. So, ACI came into picture. Now, if you, if you talk about ACI architecture, in ACI, we don't follow this three-tier architecture which we saw. We follow a single tier architecture called clones. So in nineteen fifty two, <laughs> before I was born and you were born, there was a man, definitely is no more. Charles Close. This clause um, developed a design for telephone systems. On those days, we did not have a computer and internet. For telephone network, he he designed a, a model, a topology. So, based on that design, ACI architecture works. I repeat again. In order to use ACI, there's a special architecture. There's a special design needed. You cannot use this three-tier architecture like access, distribution, and code. You cannot use that. So the only design ACI is going to work is Clause, clause architecture, clause design. This is uh, named after the designer called Charles Clause in 1952, who proposed this for a telephone system. So, this clause architecture, if you see, it is going to have some switches to which no end device will be connected and it will have some other switches where all the end devices are going to be connected. So you're going to connect all these devices to, to the down layer. Stuff making this as a complicated diagram. Let's make it simple. So all the computing device, all the storage device, we just connect all of them to the down layer of switches and we call this as leaf switches. 
beef. And even the storage box <coughs> all connected to leaf. And all the leaf, I'll call this as leaf one, leaf two, leaf three, leaf four. All the leaf connects to every spine. So to connect to spine, there is a special port actually, high speed port. They are 40 gig port, 40 gig links. These are one or 10 gig links. Whereas this port which connects to the spine from leaf, the 40 gig leaves. Now, this is what we call this clause design, clause architecture, Charles clause proposed this design for telephone network. But now for ACI, we are using this architecture. Right, so let us first, you know, learn about the components of ACI. In the previous class, I, I was telling you in the introduction class, ACI stands for application centric infrastructure, meaning when, when, when the computing device uses an application, uses an application to interact, why not network also use an application to manage easily? Yes, that is where the idea started and ACI is an application centric infrastructure. Easy management, scalable, uh, follows whitelisting model for high security. And now you see inside this uh, fabric, ACA fabric, what is ACA fabric? I'll be using this word many times. Uh, ACA fabric, what does it actually mean? This is what ACA fabric means, this portion, this blue box all leaf and spine and the wires that connects the leaf and spine that is what i mean when i say eca fabric eca fabric now within this eca fabric there is no need for there is no need for spanning tree See, we got redundant path. Usually, whenever we have redundant path, spanning tree will come into picture. Why? Because the loop will, will, will spoil the network. To avoid loop, spanning tree will come and block. If I have four paths, only one path is going to be active. The other three will be blocked by spanning tree, which is a big loss for us. But in ACI, there is no spanning tree in the core. There is no there is no need for spanning tree inside the ACI fab. Why? Because spanning tree is needed only when you have a layer two segment. ACI fabric is not layer two. AC fabric is built by using layer 3 technology. When you have layer 2 technology, you need spanning tree. See, AC fabric is a layer 3 technology. Now you may ask like, how do we have the layer 2 communication? So the answer is, you are not going to use this physical ACI fabric for your communication between A to H. You are not going to use this physical fabric. You will be creating an overlay. This is an underlay. Overlay is a virtual tunnels. 
that virtual tunnel you can have both layer two and layer three let me repeat marudi soldra the connecting device in the nikir and the end device a h in the story either on the physical topology is going to pour the career physical parts are used to pour the career in the aci fabric the layer two technology mulima aci fabric a pine party or virtual or topology will the theva get our polo urwaki other worry other than what data want to put here virtual a tunnel i pull a tunnel a vx land tunnels so we are not going to depend on the physical underlay we are going to have a virtual overlay virtual overlay when you say overlay it means what it means tunnels what tunnel it is vx land tunnels so you can have a layer two or layer three tunnels according to your wish if you put a pervasive gateway to vx land tunnel then it becomes layer three we'll talk about these things in detail later in short what i would like to say here is you are going to use the overlay you're going to use the overlay underlay physical you don't care you're going to use the overlay so what is that underlay made up of layer 3 isis protocol using isis routing protocol <coughs> using isis routing protocol the leaves and spines are discovering each other and and this discovery helps to bring up the aca fabric on top of this aca fabric we can have our own topology design topology we can have our own uh, layer two tunnels or layer three tunnels or whatever so class design class architecture and loop free underlay provided by isis this is very important and because it is class architecture any a replacement of device it's very easy see if you're using a normal nexus 7000 switches if your module goes down you need to shut down the device even the other modules will be shut down and then you will remove the module which has gone bad replace it and turn on the device which is a disruptive one <clears throat> but in aci if this goes down, only these are impacted. You just remove this and attach another one without disturbing any of the other portion of the network. You will be able to replace devices super easy and uh, very easy, uh, less time taken to repair your fabric without disturbing the traffic flow from other leaves or if you want to increase some speed as i said earlier in the previous class you just add another spine because spines are acting like a backbone more backbone you have more fast you see we have uh, computers cell phones we have our brain our brain a human brain only made all this uh, computers and cell phones but computers and cell phones are much faster than us uh, because there are many brain joined together and created that computer designed the computer not one person so many people's brain in it, many teamwork in it. 
Likewise, today they are also coming with something called quantum computer, which can do millions of tasks at the same time. I got what? Yes, millions of tasks at the same time. One in earth, la, pala lakshya kana kana, yalla yalla, adhinala yosi chesiye mudiyo. Yosi ke mudiyo, badal kudu ke mudiyo. Adhinala quantum computer nuga. Likewise, when you have more, more, more spine, more traffics and more uh, functions can be carried out at the same time. See, we human being have got only one backbone. So, the brain, you know, the brain on the head uh, controls the entire body through that spinal cord. The backbone. What if I have more spinal cord than my command given by the brain will reach the fingers and toes very faster. I'll be more faster in my actions. I can be more faster, but because I have only one spinal cord. And because I have got only one brain, I'm in this level. If I have more brain, one, two, three, four, and more spinal cord. This is these are all spinal cords. From each spine, it is coming, connecting to each leaf. So when you have more spinal cord and more brain, you can do a lot of multitasking. The efficiency of your fabric will increase. By adding spines, so how easy it is to make your network faster. You see, you no need to shut down the existing device, change the RAM and all, or you no need to throw the existing switch. You just add another switch as a spine. It increases the speed of your network. If you want more leaf, you can connect by leaf and connect to the spine so that you will have more end device computing device to connect we will if you have one more leaf you will have a few more devices connecting so enlarging your network expanding your network or troubleshooting your network is easy today in a normal uh, design like uh, the three tier architecture design if you want to do some upgradation, you need to have a maintenance window. You need to take approval from uh, your um, uh, department, and they will they will allow you. Saying from Friday evening till Sunday evening, you can have your maintenance window. So you will go and shut down everything, and you will and plug one of the device, connect to all the wires to another device. These are all complicated things. You don't have that complexity here in ACI. If this is, if this is gone bad, you just, you don't need any maintenance window. Just remove this and add another one. There is no disturbance cost to any of the other setup in your network. All right, or let's say if this is 24 port switch, I got, I want 96 port. Then all that I need to do is I need to buy another 96 port switch, connect to all the spine and uh, connect all this device to that and then remove this. So without any disturbance to the existing setup, you can, you can replace, you can upgrade very friendly. So, uh, the reason for ACI, easy management, scalability, security, you know, all the whitelist uh, authentication happens in the leaf. That is where all the end devices are connected. So, ACI definitely solves a lot of problems. In a, in a classical data center, we we have a lot of problem. You need to buy a special switch for 
special services. But ACI has got everything in one big package. All the features that is necessary for a data center is available. All right, so in our previous class in, and in this class, we have seen the introduction to ACI. Why ACI is so important? What problem it solves? A few more things uh, you now will be coming as we are talking about ACI and their different perspectives. So tomorrow, what we are going to start is uh, the components in ACI. We have uh, switches, spines, and epics. So we need to talk a lot about epics, uh, the clusters, the uh, how they work together. And we need to sp speak about your yeah, spine and leaf and what they are, how they are connected. But, uh, so that's how we're going to do for coming this class.